You never know what Drake's gonna take. I, I tend to just try to send him, you know, I send him everything. As soon as I hear Drake, is writing to a beat or using a beat. I just, man, it's like the best news I get because he's like the pickiest artist I've ever worked with. That's how you know when a song is a potential hit, you know, when you're stuck just singing the melody. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is perfect. I loved it. I'm blam for real. I might just say how I feel. I'm blam for real. I might just say how I feel. So blam is like a term, maybe it's used in the UK. I know it's used in Toronto, but it's a word that, you know, I've heard from when I was like in high school. I remember it being used to, to be high. If you're, if you're blam, you're, you know, you're red, your eyes are red, you know, you're high. So I was just really fooling around when I came up with the beat, you know, I just, I found a bunch of these sounds that sounded like classic 80s, 90s samples from like old analog machines, like old drum sounds. I had this loop going right here. Like, you know, like a vintage drum. It was very reminiscent of like old video game sounds, you know what I mean? So I just put together this, this little interesting drum loop. A lot of people know me for coming up with like lead melodies. That's like a, a big part of, you know, my sound, as I should say, you know? I had this like cool little melody idea I was coming up with. Something simple, no, no, not a lot of chords, not a lot of music, just, you know, something just to, you know, catch the attention of the listener. I just have some phaser. I use this VST called Effectrix. Um, it's created by Sugar Bites. Just put a little phaser effect on. You know, the next thing I came up with was, was the bass. Add a little kick. I have some EQ on top of the kick. One of my first concerns setting the beat out was that I felt like the kick, the kick drum wasn't really hitting hard enough. Kick, hip hop, you know, my sound, it's like, it's got a slap. So it wasn't slapping. So I asked for it, he turned the kick up, make sure it hits. And he's like, yo, I got you, bro. Like, don't even worry about it. I think he probably already did that before I even mentioned it. One of the sounds actually I had in the beat, it was in the original version, was this. I just had some, some random little vocal effects. I just threw it in the mix and... It's just really, you know, it's a subtle sound. It sits in the background. I didn't want it to be in your face. A lot of times when I'm making beats for Drake and I put little vocal chants or vocal sounds, he always asks me to take them out. So, you know, I kind of like, I was like, shh, let's just turn it down a bit. I think for most rappers, it's, it's distracting. It's this random like, like vocal sound going throughout the beat. I mean, sometimes it gets in the way of what, you know, the flow or what the rapper is trying to do. It's just in small doses, I think it works, but you know, I just kind of turned it down and threw it into the mix. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I name my beats, like I have, a, I have thousands of beats, so I run out of names all the time. I'll just name beats off of like random things, random names. I called it P of TC2, and I, I, I'm pretty sure on Netflix I saw like Pirates of the Caribbean, and I was just like, I don't know if it sounded like some pirate music to me at the time, I don't know what it was, I don't know where it came from. It's a simple acronym, you know, but it stuck, and that's the name of the beat, I guess. I know what I